Three months ago I decided to switch to a mechanical keyboard, but wasn't quite sure what style I wanted until I stumbled across ASIO's Retro Classic series. These premium keyboards and mice are designed for the modern user, but with a clear throwback to the age of typewriters. I ended up buying the Bluetooth Retro Compact keyboard and paired it with a Retro Classic mouse, both in ASIO's gunmetal and black leather design, though other brighter options are available. Regardless, I've been really happy with how well they've performed over the past few months, so here are my thoughts. The standout feature of these peripherals is definitely their design. The keyboard's circular plastic keys give off a retro vibe with their gunmetal electroplated borders that match the aluminum surrounding the keyboard's chassis and are set against a real leather topping. The same painted aesthetic is found on the pedestal style rubber feet, but the plastic feels sturdy and after three months of use shows no signs of wear, something I was skeptical of when I started so I'm okay that the keyboard doesn't use real metal components everywhere. Unlike the full-size Retro Classic keyboards, the compact version doesn't have telescoping pedestal feet, but instead has two sets of rear pedestals that can be clipped in or out to switch the keyboard between a flat position and 10 degrees of elevation. This and the lack of a dedicated number pad are the biggest differences between the compact and full-size versions as far as I can tell. If you've never used a keyboard with circular keycaps before, it does take some getting used to. Personally, I really like it, but I know a lot of others who prefer the traditional square caps. In order to achieve the contemporary typewriter aesthetic, ASIO uses a typelit key mechanism, which blends the Cherry MX Blues with Omron's Romer G switches to allow for centrally lit keys with a nice audible click. But it's worth noting that these switches are a little loose when not engaged, as well as have a shorter travel distance of about 3.2 millimeters and aren't quite as loud as the MX Blues, though they're still quite clicky. Overall, the keyboard is a little heavy, weighing in at 1,062 grams, so while I have carried it between my home and the office, I think it's best experienced as a stationary device, especially because you'll want to use it with the padded leather palm rest that comes with it. I was always worried about damaging one of the keys in transit, or catching one of the circular keycaps while packing or unpacking it. The Retro Classic mouse, on the other hand, is a slim three-button design that's perfect for commuting, weighing in at only 100 grams. It features the same gunmetal style surround as the keyboard, which matches the plastic scroll wheel, and that is surrounded by either a black matte plastic or leather interchangeable top surface. Personally, I like the look and feel of the leather one. Despite its style, flipping the mouse over we're quickly reminded that it's a modern accessory. The Retro Classic mouse features a PixArt PAW3805 optical sensor that can vary the DPI settings from 400 up to 3000, and so far I haven't had any issues with it working on different surfaces, whether wood, glass, or even shiny white desks. Both the Retro Compact keyboard and the Retro Classic mouse offer Bluetooth connectivity options and work well with Windows, Mac OS, Android, and iOS, but interestingly, only the keyboard supports multiple device pairing, with the ability to configure three devices at a time and swap between them on the go by pressing the function key with numbers 1, 2, or 3. Though unfortunately, you have to switch to Mac or PC setups on the back of the keyboard, as well as swap out the function keycaps if you want the best experience for either system independently. One set of keycaps with both system functions would have been best for me, because I'm constantly switching between operating systems. I often jump between a desktop and two laptops, depending on what I'm working on, so the ability to switch between multiple devices using the mouse is something that I do really miss. However, I've been able to get by using the mouse's radio frequency connection dongle that can easily be swapped between devices on the fly. The Retro Compact keyboard doesn't offer an RF dongle. Instead, it can be switched from Bluetooth to USB mode if you prefer a tethered connection. The mouse can't communicate via USB, but both will still work while charging from the USB Type-C ports, though I haven't had to charge them all that often. ASIO claims that the mouse's 1000 mAh battery will last up to 4 months between charges, and that the keyboard's 5000 mAh battery will last between a month or two depending on how bright you set the backlight, or up to 9 months if you shut off the backlight altogether, and this matches really well with my experience so far. There's a 4 dot battery level indicator on the bottom of the mouse, but not on the keyboard. Instead, ASIO opted to use the number keys to indicate charge level when you press the function and escape key together a neat implementation that keeps the keyboard free of additional clutter. All things considered, I'm very happy with ASIO's Retro Compact Keyboard and Retro Classic Mouse. They managed to fit into my multi-device setup, and they've held up well throughout my testing, but neither one is perfect. I really love the compact style of the mouse, but I wish that ASIO had included multi-device switching as well as horizontal scrolling with the click wheel. 
With the keyboard, I find that over time, the back feet have started to detach if I slide it across my desk. Not a big deal, but worth noting. The bigger issue that I think some will face is the circular keycaps. This profile exaggerates the feeling of the gap between keys if you've never used them before, and the texture of the press can change if you press on the painted edge instead of directly in the center of the key, something that I could see frustrating for gamers, or others particular about the feel of each key press. But the biggest obstacle for ASIO's retro peripherals is the price. The Retro Compact keyboard will cost you about $220 US dollars, while the Retro Classic mouse will cost about $100. And while both are well built, you're definitely paying a premium for the aesthetic, not additional functionality. If that's what you're looking for, I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can find both of these. Otherwise, if you actually have experience with any of the ASIO Retro lineup, please consider leaving a comment down below so that others know your opinion. And as always, please like this video if you found it helpful, subscribe if you aren't already, and I'll see you next time.